Welcome back. In the previous session, we had studied about the direct material mix variance. In today's session, we are going to learn about the direct material yield variance. Now, what was direct material mix variance? Even if the total quantity of raw materials remain the same, we will still end up with a higher profit or a lower profit if we are using a cheaper material more or an expensive material more. This was direct material mix variance. Now, in direct material yield variance, we are trying to find out whether the total quantity of raw materials is more or less than the standard. So let's take a look. Now, this is the very same question that we did for calculating the direct material mix variance. Now, for calculating the direct material yield variance, the first thing that we have to find out is the weighted average standard price. Weighted average standard price, don't get scared by this name. It is not something big. It is just the average price of raw materials. Now, we have got three raw materials priced at $1.7 per kg, $1.4 per kg, and $1.3 per kg. We want to find out the average price of these raw materials. That is the meaning of weighted average standard price. Now, before we calculate the weighted average standard price of these raw materials, I will give you a very simple example so you'll get the concept clear. Suppose you buy one egg for 10 rupees, okay? So one into 10, 10 rupees is the amount that you spend, plus one egg you bought for five rupees. So one into five, so the total amount that you spend is 15 rupees, okay? One into 10, 10 plus one into five, five, so 15 rupees. And how many eggs did you get? Two eggs, right? So the average price of eggs will be 15 divided by two, or you will get the average price of eggs as 7.5 rupees per egg, correct? So this is the average price. This is the same thing that we are going to apply for raw materials. Now, don't get confused when you see the point figure. What are we trying to find out? We are trying to find out the value divided by quantity. So in the numerator, it is quantity multiplied by price plus the next quantity multiplied by the price plus the third quantity multiplied by the price. That will come in the numerator. So it is 0.1 into 7 plus 0.1 into 4 plus 0.1 into 3 divided by what is the total number of units? It is the total of these three. That's the total of the quantity. So it is 0.1 plus 0.1 plus 0.1, which comes in the denominator. So we get the average price of raw materials. And always note that it will be a number between 3 and 7. That is the highest price and the lowest price, a number between the two. So the amount is $4.67 per kg. Now we will make a comparison between the actual quantity of raw materials and the standard quantity of raw materials. So I have just copied the figure that we have just calculated. That is the average price is $4.67 per kg. And what is the actual quantity of raw materials? This is the actual raw materials. So the total is 330 kg. So let's make a note of it. Actual raw materials is 330 kg. And now we have to find out what is the standard quantity of raw materials required for the actual output of 1000 units. So for this, we have to always find out the input output ratio from the question. What is the quantity of raw materials that you have to input to get a certain quantity of output. So it is given in this question also. If you input 300, sorry, 0.3 kg of raw material, you will get one unit of output. So that's the input output ratio. So I'm just making a note of it. 0.3 kg will give one unit of output. So 1000 units of output requires how much input of raw materials? This is what we have to find. So since we have this information, one unit, we need 0.3 kg. So for 1,000 units, we need 1,000 into 0.3 kg or 300 kg. So that was the standard raw materials required. What was the actual raw materials that we consumed? 330 kg. But the standard specifies only 300 kg, which means that we have consumed 30 kg extra compared to the standard. So that's an adverse variance. 
So we have the variance in kg, that is 330 kg is the actual raw materials used when the standard had stipulated just 300 kg. So 330 minus 300, so we have 30 kg as the adverse variance. But we don't want the variance in kg, we want the variance in dollar. So in order to convert the kg into dollar, we have to multiply by our average price that we had calculated. What was it? It is 4.67. So variance in dollar is 30 kg multiplied by 4.67, we get $140 adverse. So this is the direct material yield variance. And direct material yield variance plus direct material mix variance gives the direct material usage variance. So that's the final step. So direct material usage variance is direct material mix variance plus direct material yield variance. If you recollect the direct material mix variance that we found in the previous session was $50 adverse. So it's $50 adverse plus direct material yield variance we've already calculated as $140. So we add both and we get the direct material usage variance as $190 adverse. With this, we come to an end of today's session. I hope you have understood how the direct material mix and the yield variances have been calculated. If you have any doubts, do post it in the comment box below. Thank you all and have a great day.